So I think I completely forgot to even take photos of this side. So, <clears throat> let me see. It didn't fit together right. I don't know what happened somewhere within the printing process, but I had to do a lot of heat treatment. Uh, I call it heat treatment. That's where you take like a heat gun or a um, blow dryer or something and you put it on it, you know, to slowly heat up the plastic and then push it into place. And what typically happens is it causes runs like that in your sidewalls when you do that process. Um, but if you're already going to use Bondo and stuff, then it's not really that big of a deal. It just kind of creates these little soft spots when you do that. Um, inside, I did my little stitch process on the inside. Um, but I did have to do that. So, right here in the front, you can't tell anymore because of all the Bondo. It actually, it actually goes inwards right here where the parts meet. And so I went ahead, while the last part of the helmet is printing, you can see this other side's not on. While that last part is still printing, I went ahead and took the time to bondo all this up. Because I don't have a whole lot of free time. So I'm, I'm not waiting for everything to be done printing before putting it together. I'm putting it together piece by piece and t kind of saving time. Another thing too is there was a failed uh, support. Because this is printed like sideways or something, there was a failed support. So this goes like this, and then this humps like that. You can tell by this, you can see how that makes kind of a, an arrow sh shape. Well, this one just had this across the front, and then this kind of bumped here, so it didn't really look like that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be looking on this, and I just built this up with a ton of Bondo. Just a ton of it. I'm going to shape that out using um, sandpaper, and it'll be fairly easy to do. It's not that bad. You've seen several of my builds, if you guys have been fans of the channel for a while, uh, and how bad some of them ended up printing out, and I just basically, as long as I can get it to fit together, then I can bondo the hell out of the rest of it and get it to look good. Uh, I'm doing the stitching on the inside. I'm also going to probably do fiberglass on the inside. I've done the higher quality and 50% infill. And I've used super glue and baking soda uh, to connect the pieces together. So there's going to be no chance that this thing cracks or breaks on the way there. I went ahead and showed you this before I bondo it. This is actually better than the other side was. So, but this kind of still shows you just how bad it didn't fit together. I mean, the back went together. That went pretty well. But right here, you can see that gigantic gap. It's all filled in with super glue and baking soda. And then this right here and this down here, those are the chin strap clips, which are printed on. Um, but I'm going to use some actual metal ones because there's no way that an actual chin strap is going to uh, connect to the plastic. And they didn't line up right as you can see here. Just kind of how it lines, how much gap is in between it. So I mean that wasn't, wouldn't have worked anyways. What I did with this side, you can see where that one chin strap connection was. And it's just smooth. And the other one was up top. And it's just smooth. So you can see exactly with all that Bondo work, just how good you can get it. You see how rounded that edge is. I took a Dremel to this, and Dremel actually, when you're Dremeling PLA, uh, it tends to heat up the PLA, and PLA melts at a low temperature. Uh, you know, you print at 230, 220 degrees Celsius, so it just kind of shows just how low of a temperature, and once you start adding that friction in and stuff, it, it starts peeling back and, and melting. Uh, I'm not really worried about how bad it looks right now because it looks pretty bad, uh, but you can see right in there what that turns out looking like. You know, there's certain spots that you can see through here where the PLA kind of peeled back and you can just see 
what it looks like underneath that's exactly what it's going to look like i'd rather have a lower you know have this right on and then that part around the line be lower than the top because the bond is going to go over the top of that and then once you smooth it out it'll be even but if this were higher then i would have to sand down the plastic itself or do something so i'm gonna go ahead and bondo this other side now but we've got a full helmet now now oh and i gotta do the uh i'll probably do the inside first because i've been doing this stitch it just tell you what with the super glue the stitching on the inside because it heats up and it heats up that almost that entire first layer and melts it on the inside with the super glue that and the uh friction heating from the outside uh it pretty much makes this just a solid bond so i could drop this right now and it wouldn't break well i don't know about this last piece that i added on how well that would stay on but once i get finished it'll 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 be good So what I've done is the gray on here is the primer filler and this is the Bondo. So I do what I, I did on this, what I do with all of my helmets. Uh, I did the Bondo first and you guys will have had seen or will see the pictures of the Bondoing process. So what I typically do is I put Bondo on first, just on all the major parts, then I sand it down. Um, then I continue to layer the bondo on uh, until I build it up exactly where I want it to be like for the correct curvature and things like that um, then once I get to a certain point there's so much bondo on make you know you've got the color of the filament and the color of the bondo and different colors of bondo because of the hardener is is you don't mix the same amount in every time so all the all the bondos a slightly different tint of color so once you got all these colors going on at one time it's just a good idea to get a uniform color on there just to kind of see where you're at so I usually start out with the filler primer because the filler primer does two things it gives me a uniform coating so I can kind of see where I'm at and see where everything is and also it helps fill in the little 3d printed lines uh, and then what I do with that is I, I usually do the first coat and then after the first coat I wet sand it kind of see where I'm at do one more coat wet sand it again see where I'm at and then I go through over the top with more Bondo just hitting uh, all the little spots that I feel like still needed to be have a little bit of touch up and stuff to them uh, and then I go through and sand that down uh, one last time and now I'm gonna need a uniform color again but I've already hit this with an entire can of primer filler so it's expensive stuff you don't have to continue to use that and i don't always use primer filler the first time when i first just need a, a uniform color i usually just use any old type of paint that i have that is a paint and primer so i've got a purple here that i found that's a paint and primer and it'll be it'll work just fine and i actually like it because it's gloss and this is a really good idea so i do two different methods uh, if I'm using a non-gloss colored paint, I'll paint it one color to get a uniform color and then I will speckle another color over it, just lightly speckle. That way you can kind of tell exactly when you get it smooth because when you're sanding it, all the speckles will be gone when you have it perfectly smooth. It's a really good process and it, it makes any beginner painter, it's really easy on you. Gloss is also another process. It's awesome too because you'll know where you haven't sanded if there's still gloss 
on because once you sand gloss it turns it dull so those are two things that you can do in order to know that you've gotten every inch of it sanded either use a gloss or use one color and then speckle another color on those are really instead of just getting a uniform color and sanding it and then realizing halfway through it that you didn't get it all sand it's just a really good idea so i'm going to take this purple i'm going to sand the whole thing or i'm going to paint the whole thing purple then i'm going to sand it down probably one more time maybe do that twice i'm not 100 percent sure just kind of as needed uh, might have a few little spots that still need uh, some touch-ups and stuff but most likely I'm just going to need one, well, I don't know about right here because this did come down and I can still feel it. I sanded that smooth, but I can really feel that. So I may either need to put some uh, Bondo here. I'm not 100% sure, but that's why we do this process. I'm going to get one coat of purple across this and right here. Uh, it's a little a lot of times when you do a ton of sanding like I do you kind of sand this down perfectly and you, you really don't need any type of filler or anything because I, you can enough sanding it'll sand the actual plastic itself um, but I can feel that one but anyways I'm gonna hit it with the gloss and let it dry and then tomorrow I think I'm gonna come back in and sand the gloss off and kind of just see where I'm at that actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Too bad I'm not painting this purple because that was almost a perfect coat. Perfect shine. Holy moly. So just to show you, this is this is what it looks like when you just get a uniform color. And I was going to start with the gold, but there's some plastic showing through here. And this stuff here, if there's any plastic showing through, it does show through that. So I'm probably going to put one more coating of one thin layer of uh, purple on here. And then we're going to start the gold. Alright, well I went ahead and started on the gold. You can see how flaky this gold is. Uh, it's not quite the right color as of right now, but it kind of satins out. This color always does. So typically what I do with it is, you can tell where the spray, the spray can has like a line. Um, and you can kind of tell. When it dries you won't be able to see that. But it will satin out a little bit. So what you have to do is go through here and I'll sand a few spots down. I get a real high grit and then I'll sand it and then I will get a clear lacquer and I will put a clear lacquer on it and it'll look really good. So I went ahead and did the decals today. They look great. Um, I don't have the front piece so the stripe only goes so far because there will be a front piece going up and over this um, and I was worried I wouldn't get this thing straight it's a little off I mean down here it kind of goes but it's gonna be hidden behind something so it looks a whole lot better you know the thing about decals is that as you're going you can kind of do this to them and then push them down and and they they stay so that's pretty good So, they look really good. Really great decals. And then the back, uh, I think I'm going to buy some 3D bumpers. So, I couldn't get this line cut right when I came down the back. So, I went ahead and put the end back over and put the flag here to kind of cover up this little mistake here. And at a distance, you can't really tell. And I, but I want the 3D bumper because it's bigger than this. I mean, it'll cover a whole lot more. That one really doesn't cover much. It's just kind of a little spot on the back. So it has the NFL sign and the warning sign over here. So, so while I'm waiting, 
on the face mask to print I went ahead and did some fake ear pieces and I mean it's just real cruddy um, padding on the inside but it's not like this is football ready or anything I just want to have it to where it's comfortable for I want to have it to where it's comfortable for me to wear you know and I also went ahead and put the the uh, clips on because I had to get I could use the T you can see the T clips here the T nuts here but I had to use regular nuts here because uh, you can see how much thicker this is than this so uh, it just wasn't long enough so I went and got some different screws and then they didn't fit into the T nuts so I went ahead and just used regular nuts so and you can kind of see how crappy this looks on the inside they were actually too small the holes were so I had to bore them out but I'd still rather have the clear clips than 3d printing the clips just because they're they're still just gonna look better even with that on the inside because all you're gonna see is gray I just want to make sure that I have this clear I could get some clear 3d printing some clear uh, filament but it's still just not gonna look as good as this all right so this you can see the two halves of the face mask you might be wondering why I have it it's because I have an into three and it's just not big enough of a bed uh, so the easiest thing is just gonna be to half it right along that middle line and then put it together so this one I got set up on the bed correctly and this side I didn't <laughs> you can see how much bondo I put there that's because that was a flat side so but that is I gotta glue that together. I've already bonded this side. Just wanted to make it a whole lot easier on me. I'm gonna join these two sides together with super glue. Then I'm gonna bondo this side, and then we'll be putting this thing together. I totally didn't even get a picture of it um, all put together before I started spraying. It's already got like a layer of uh, this gold on it. So I know this isn't a well, it is a paint and primer in one. It's good. I really like to use gold sometimes when I'm at a filler primer. Um, I'll just use basic, uh, like on my other one, once I ran out of filler primer, I started using just a basic paint and primer just to finish priming it. But I really love using like a metallic color, and I've, ex I've said this in other videos before. Um, and I don't know if it's the gold flakes in it or what. But it seems like gold filled, not gold, not just gold, but anything that has metallic flakes in it. it feels little cracks almost even better sometimes than filler primer does. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the flakes. I don't know if that's just, you know, placebo effect. I just think it happens, so therefore it does. <laughs> or what. But... What I'm doing with this, since I don't have any filler powder at my house currently at the moment, I'm just going to put a thick coat of this gold on here because I'm not using this gold. This is one of the golds that I got to try to find the right 49ers gold. It was a lighter gold, as you can kind of see as I'm doing this. Because the Niners gold is actually lighter than the gold that I had. It's more of a, uh, it's got more of a sunnier disposition to it. Uh, like a brighter, more yellowish tinted gold. And but and this is certainly probably closer to that, but I didn't really like this color nearly as much as I liked the other color. It actually looks it actually looks really good. Like all I did is put the gold on to get a uniform color to see where I'm at. And I mean there's a few spots here that could use a little bit of sanding. But honestly, if I use a filler primer as the gray. Well, no, because then that'll that'll be a different feel to it. But all I need to do is put a. I mean, there's small little spots here and everything. But all I need to do is put a gray over the top and then put a clear coat and then all that stuff to fill in. So this is something I wanted to show you guys here, and this is why. I go into mesh mixer and make thing, make things solid. If I get it free from Thingiverse, I go in, put it in a mesh mixer, I make it solid before I print it. And this is why. 
So this is the original print right here of the front piece that goes onto the helmet. This kind of just shows you what it, the helmet would have looked like had I not taken the entire helmet and put it into a mesh mixer and made it solid. So sometimes when you get a paper cure file or just a file that somebody 3D scanned or something, uh, it doesn't create the entire 3D print the way that professional 3D print models are made. It just kind of makes a skin, almost like making it out of paper. And you can see just how thin that is. That is literally one pass back and forth. Um, not very durable either. You can see it's already cracked. And it did actually look like this, but when I was taking it up from the bed, the bottom part broke off and stuff. It was just too thin to uh, be able to handle. Even just like having it in my hand, it's just too brittle. Like about to fall apart. But you take it into mesh mixer, you can see just how thick we add. Basically, when you make it solid, you add two walls on each side with infill in the middle. And so I just went in there and made it about as solid as I, as I could. And I do have a video showing how to do that. And if you guys would like another video, uh, it's in one of my tips videos from a while back. And I probably should update it. Um, but it just kind of shows you the difference between a professional looking print and just a real thin uh, mess of a print. And that's what's crazy is, you know, anybody that gets any free files, especially helmets, like superhero helmets and things like that, a lot of those, uh, you can take regular Pepicura, which is, Pepicura is a way, it's basically files that you can print onto cardstock paper and actually make a helmet out of cardstock. And then you can take like, um, you know, the newspaper and glue and stuff or whatever it's called, paper mache, and you can put it around the cardstock and actually make helmets that way. Or I did one time, I made a Power Ranger helmet, the very first helmet I ever made was a Pepe Cura file, and then I just put Bondo around the outside and sanded it down and stuff. And it wasn't very good, we ended up throwing it away. <clears throat> but those files are made for cardstock, so it shows you they're just paper thin. And... If you want to actually make decent prints with those, you have to take them into Mesh Mixer and make them into solid pieces. You just go into Edit, Make Solid, uh, turn the accuracy on, um, and then um, pick out your parameters, you know, one millimeter up to two millimeter, something like that thick, and, and it's real, real easy to do. Kosh Production. And there it is. I put, I didn't show an assembly because it just, it was too much work. But I have the clips that I got from eBay. Just slid this part up and over and then pop these on over the uh, face mask and then set them in with a drill so you can see how those went on and that's how it looks i've already posted a picture on uh, instagram but that shows you the helmet setting on the ender 3. so this is all made with the ender 3 but of course it was made in sections and stuff so and then on the back here and i'll show you this in the rest of the video you can have so the stickers, the decals, those were all bought on eBay. Uh, and I have one more sticker, but I just can't find it anywhere. It's the American flag, the warning, and then the side decals. And then I have a front decal that's a 49ers logo that goes here, but I can't find it. It got lost around all that time. So, but that's what she looks like. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces for the helmet itself and then the helmet the face mask is split into two pieces directly down the middle and then three or no eight nine ten eleven eleven pieces 3d printed and then the decals the clips both bought from eBay and the t-nuts that actually go here. I wonder if you can see the other one. It's actual T-nuts that go in regular helmets. You can see the other one right there. 
Got those from eBay and got these regular bolts from Walmart. So basically it's a whole helmet about 98% made from 3D printing. So let me know what you guys think. Speed, speed.